Hello everyone. Before we start, I'd firstly like to thank the ICFM Ukraine and ICB Global for the opportunity to present this webinar on their platform. Today we're going to talk about finance security. My name is Tim Woodhouse and together with Elena, we are the Woodhouse Partnership. We undertake finance projects and consulting for SMEs in the UK and Ukraine with an emphasis on problem solving and finance systems and process improvements. Our mantra is adding value to your business. So what do we mean by finance security? We would define it as a suite of policies across the company, not confined to the finance function, to seek to achieve certain specific goals. Firstly, they support the overall business strategy. They reinforce each other. In other words, you can't have one policy doing something and another policy in another part of the organization undoing it. They protect the assets and the reputation of the business. As a result of the first three, they ensure the long-term profitability and stability of the organization. So, why do we need a finance security system in the organization? A good finance specialist must have a wide vision of the business. An ex-boss and successful businessman once said to me that the finance department is the brain of the organization. Every business decision has a financial impact and it's us in the finance department who measure that impact. As a result, we believe that finance must also proactively influence business decisions. So, what are the components of a typical finance security system? We've chosen to split them here between internal and external. Internal is where everything is under our control and external is where we're dealing with the outside world. On the internal side, we have the business strategy, short, medium and long term. The finance department with its various policies, accounting policy, its management, accounting cycle, tax, internal controls, financial modelling, etc. Then there's the HR policy and IT policy. On the external side, we have competitors. We need to protect our intellectual property. At the same time, business intelligence, we need to gain competitor knowledge. As customers, credit checks, pricing policy, contracts and standard terms and conditions, and also credit control. On the supplier side, you have a procurement policy. We believe that a lot of these components are self-evident, but we'd like to take a few of them and look at them in more detail in the following slides. We've taken three components from the previous slide to look at in more detail. These are the business strategy, accounting policy and management accounting cycle. Alice came to a crossroads and there were three paths in front of her. But which path should I take? She cried. A Cheshire cat sitting in a tree overheard her and asked, where are you going? Alice said, I don't know. To which the Cheshire cat replied, if you don't know where you're going, then any road will take you there. What we mean is if you don't have a clear and detailed business strategy, then we think you're already in big trouble. Your business strategy might be to grow organically, grow by acquisition, get into new product lines or new markets, sell the business or even close the business. But the questions are still the same. Where are we now? Where do we want to be? When do we want to get there? How are we going to get there? And how do we know when we're there? We like to think of the finance security systems of the business as little satellites revolving around the central business strategy. We've been surprised by how many SMEs don't have any formal accounting policy document at all. 
we consider it to be a very important element. Firstly, it gives the business the opportunity to interpret the applicable accounting standards in the best interests of the company. In other words, to support the business strategy. It ensures the consistent application of rules. It's great for the onboarding of new finance staff. And next, consider auditors, tax in inspectors, investors or buyers. They will read your accounting policy to see what you say you do. Then they'll check it to see if you do what you say. In other words, you talk the talk, do you walk the walk? The accounting policy should be a live document, not something you just write once and then put it away in a dusty file. It should be updated regularly for changes in laws, the business strategy or improvements that you want to include. It shouldn't be an encyclopedia or a regurgitation of the accounting standards. It should cover the main areas specific to the business. It should be understandable. It's not only for the finance department. We believe that all senior managers should have at least an understanding and appreciation of the accounting policy and what it means to the business. Remember the main questions on the business strategy slide. Where are we? Where are we going? And are we there yet? These are questions which the management accounting cycle should seek to answer. I think the key elements of management accounting are familiar to us. I will say that an ex-boss finance director of a large publishing group once explained to me the difference between plans, budgets and forecasts. He said, consider Leeds United Football Club. They may have a plan to win the Premier League. The annual budget may be to finish in the top 10. The forecast halfway through the season may show them just marginally avoiding relegation. Management accounts should be timely, accurate, relevant and understandable. Us in finance will often need to dig deeper to explain specific variances in detail. This implies a good handle of the main drivers of the business. We need to give the information to management in time so they have the opportunity to react, to react and take corrective action. If anyone would like more information about finance security, either for themselves or their clients, then please feel free to contact us on the email or phone numbers below. Thank you very much.